<coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yes, now we are going a little bit under the surface. We are coming to archaeology and to a project which is yeah, one of the most important projects of the last years. And that's not only my words, I'm the director of this project, but it's an it's internationally uh, so, uh, told like this. It's a project in southeastern Turkey at a site called Göbekli Tepe. Göbekli Tepe means uh, mound with belly or mound with, uh, yeah, mound with belly. It's just his name, an old name from, from the map. We didn't invent his name, but it shows a little bit, uh, or it's, it's uh, recognizable. We have the natural limestone plateau here and all this mound, which is not a natural mound, which is an artificial mound. This is uh, the belly on, on the mound explaining the name. The project is done by the German Archaeological Institute, where I'm coming from too, but in close cooperation with the local authorities, especially the General Directorate for Antiquities in Ankara and the University of Shandli Urfa, the Haran University, and some other institutions. Uh, mainly responsible for conservation and restoration of the site. For the scientific work, we have financement mainly from German Research Foundation, which is uh, financing the project, which is a long-term project. We are now in the 20th year of work, and we hope to continue for many, many years in, in the future. Okay, so that's the framing. I, I have to say this, who is uh, giving, who, is, uh, who are the institutions and who is giving money for our work at a site, but what's uh, the importance of this site? At first, I already showed you this location. It's a huge limestone ridge and this artificial mound is on top of it. Such, such artificial mounds are very common in the Near East. They are called Tel in Arabic language or Tepe or Höyük in Turkish language, I think some will know Çatal Hög, a site also in the Neolithic site uh, in central Anatolia. And Göbekli is a site like this, it's, but it's, it has some, some specific, some, it's a unique site because it's much older than all the other ones. It's belonging to the 10th and 9th millennium BC. So it means, roughly spoken, some monuments there are 12,000 years old, 12,000 years before today, or 10,000, 10th millennium BC. That's just after the Ice Age. Who knows a little bit about geology knows that the Ice Age is a global phenomenon, and now with the ice corings in Greenland, we can date it very, very exactly. It was not a long process, the end of the Ice Age. It was what we call a rapid climate change, a very rapid development, around 9,600, and that's the time when the building activities at Göbekli started. I told you an artificial mound made by the humans by erecting buildings, walls, and several things above each other, so the mound was created. This is not so special in the Near East, but as I told you, the time frame, 10th, 9th millennium, that's really uh, very strange. We didn't expect that in this time, when all over the world people still had been hunter-gatherers, that, we could, that they had been able to, to produce such uh, buildings, to do such huge work, and, and much more. We will see some examples of the world of Göbekli Tepe, which is such, a, such an uh, unexpected and unknown world uh, before. Many saying Göbekli Tepe is changing the history. That's not true. It's not changing, but it's adding, adding a chapter, and a very important chapter to the history of humanity, a chapter we didn't know that it exists before. And this chapter is about the transition from hunter-gatherer societies to farming, to food-producing societies. This is a, 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 a form of subsistence we still based on our base is agrarian, agrarian societies, and this was invented in this region in this time. The region is the Near East, we will see some maps later. And here an idea about the mount, uh, an aerial view. When we started the project in 95, uh, what we can see is yeah, there was 
nearly nothing to see, just the tree and fields. It was used for agriculture by the local people, but the surface finds had been showing us very, very clearly the importance of the site and the dating by diagnostic flint tools and other, other tools. Uh, uh, pottery is not existent, it's not yet invented, so we call this stage in archaeology the pre-pottery Neolithic culture before the invention of pottery, but uh, it's the beginning of the Neolithic period. The Neolithic period uh, means food producing a period in, in our terms. And yeah, to understand the importance of Gerbigli Tepe, we have to enlarge our frame uh, yeah, to a global view. On this map in red, you see all the regions in the world where this transition from hunter-gatherer cultures to food producing cultures happened independently from each other. So we have some regions in Mesoamerica, South America, in the Southeast, and of course you're right, these are the numbers BC, uh, written about some in Africa very late uh, in comparison to the uh, core area in the Near East, where this transition happened around 9,000, or 10th, late 10th, early 9th millennium. And this is a region, since a long time we call the Fertile Crescent of the Near East, because it's, uh, in the south we have the Arabian Desert, to the north we have the mountains of the Taurus and the Sacros uh, Mountains. So this is an area with the most favorable climatic conditions and also with famor most favorable uh, uh, geographic conditions, a fertile grassland. And yeah, for a long time we thought that the western wing was important regarding to the development of early civilization, of early agrarian civilization. But now we understand the research not only done by our team, but by many teams, an international group of American, French, British, Turkish, Italian, Japanese, German, and so on, uh, archaeologists working in this region. We understand there is something like a golden triangle within these fertile crescents, where the most important uh, things are uh, uh, going on. Yeah, and Göbekli Tepe is located in the Golden Triangle and it has a very important role. We will see some uh, of the monuments we are excavating there. The other sites mapped here in red are belonging to this time, to the 10th, 9th millennium, but these are settlements of this period, settlements of settled hunter-gatherers. Also, this was new, it was a discovery maybe 20, 25 years ago, that we have already settled hunter-gatherers. We thought that hunter-gatherers always are nomadic, but in this region they changed their life already before the invention of, of food producing. A settled hunter-gatherers, Göbekli Tepe is not a settlement, it's belonging to it, but it's only a sanctuary. But what a sanctuary, or many sanctuaries together, so we will see examples. Neolithic, yeah, just to have an idea what it means, from wild to domestic, mainly here wild cereals, domestic cereals, you see they are getting much bigger, much more uh, uh, results. Uh, with the animals, it's a little bit more difficult. It's the reason why only four animals had been domesticated at the beginning, uh, she, uh, goat, sheep, cattle, and a pig. We exclude the dog. The dog was domesticated earlier by the hunter-gatherers already, but it's a different story. He was domesticated not for meat production, but to be fellow of the hunter. But this means Neolithic societies, food-producing societies, on the base of domesticated species, species, uh, plants, and animals. Yeah, and our prediction that this side of Göbekli Tepe is so important, it was completely fulfilled during the excavations here now, excava sorry, excavation work uh, 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 in an aerial photo from 2011 with several uh, areas, and there yeah, are many findings, findings like these flint tools are very common, or yeah, uh, findings like sculptures. This is, so the flints are known from everywhere, but not such large scale sculptures like this one, or also composite uh, monuments like this totem pole uh, uh, sculpture with several uh, elements on top, uh, maybe a lion here, an, ear, an eye, an ear, and below a human and another human. So very exciting uh, compositions and an art which we didn't know before, which is challenging our ability to interpret. And most important architecture, monumental architecture, sorry, I'm mixing here, monumental architecture, mainly ovals or circles with pillars, 
uh, delineated by pillars and two of the pillars, but very big ones always in the center, and the pillars always uh, T-shaped. So this strange T-shape uh, we can understand. So here another view of one of these enclosures, the, the surrounding oval with the T-shapes, which are smaller, and the central pillars here, the T-shapes. Fortunately, we can understand the meaning of these T-shapes, which is a, at first a little bit strange. Highly stylized humans are depicted because in some cases we have arms depicted, we have the hands, the fingers, and also some a part of garment is depicted. So the T-shapes are stylized humans, and very often in Gerbig Litabe we have uh, animals also depicted on them, like attributes uh, set on the T-shapes. The so T-shapes are unique in history. We don't have T-shapes in the Paleolithic period before. We don't have them after the time of Gerbeg Litebe, which ends with the ninth millennium. There are just some very rough comparisons, like the Taulas in Menorca, but this is a very different uh, function, very different meaning. It's really a table. Taula means table. These are tables. It's no connection with the T-shapes of Gerbeg Litebe. And these T-shapes, these are so important because right, looking back to the upper Paleolithic art, like Lascaux, Altamira, or the recently discovered caves like Chauvet or, or uh, Koske here, uh, so here the animals are always dominant. The animals are in the center. In Gerbegli now, we have the human form being the superior form, and it's clear there is a connection with the phenomenon of domestication, uh, uh, because now the human is, is a boss, and the animals are reduced being attributes of, uh, of the humans. Yeah, some uh, impressions of the excavations of, of these uh, uh, circles, of these enclosures with here, for example, in situ, in original positions, the central pillars with a height of 5 meter 50 on top of the original floor. We didn't erect here anything. It's all in found in its original uh, position. Uh, and yeah, we are in a, really in a very lucky uh, uh, um, we are very lucky to have the, the chance to excavate such an exciting, such a, an, an important site like Gerbegli Tepe. This is unique. There is no parallel. There is no comparison. We have contemporaneous sites, as I told you, but they don't, see, they don't have this kind of monumental um, uh, art and monumental pillars. Very often we have combinations of motifs depicted. They are very rich world, showing a narrative character, showing that we have illustrations of stories, of mythological stories in front of us. And even more, when we look to this part, we have objects of unknown function, but we have animals, a bird, a quadruped, and a reptile, a frog. And su such an association, together with the objects, it's very similar to what things we know from for example, old Egypt from 4th millennium Egypt on slate palettes. So started the Egyptian hieroglyphic writing in the same way, the sign of city and animals uh, added to it. So, but yeah, in Gerbeg Litebe, it came to its end. There was no continuation. Unfortunately, Gerbeg Litebe completely had been abandoned for unknown reasons so far. In Egypt, from this beginnings, the invention of the hieroglyphic writing started. So Gerbeg Litebe is part of this story, but with a big, big uh, uh, interruption here. We have the, the, the image being an image. We have the transformation into what we call in German Bildzeichen. And from these Bildzeichen, uh, other signs are developing. And here we're coming to our letter alpha or R. You easily can understand it. But this is a discontinuation of many thousand years between Gerbeg Litebe around 9,000 and the invention of true writing around 3,000. There are at least 6,000 years gap. A gap we try to fill, but for the moment we don't know how to fill it, it's, but we want to continue our work, of course, and hopefully young colleagues will continue the research in this very exciting period of mankind. One colleague said, it's not from me, Gerbeg Litebe seems to be the most smoking gun in archaeology at the moment. I think it's really true because we have so many unexpected and new results which are changing our ability to interpret. And we can see or we can reconstruct there was something like a community, a cultic community, Gerbeg Litebe with its sanctuaries, no settlement, but settlements around here, Gerbeg Litebe. And our zoologists can recognize from the archaeofauna from the animal bones discovered at 
Quebecly and the other sides, that the early domestication of cattle was done in the Syrian Euphrates, sheep in the Turkish Euphrates, goat in the Taurus Mountains, and pig in the upper Tigris and Basin. But independently from each other, but very, very quick, all these discoveries, all these inventions had been brought together to, add to something we called Neolithic package, and uh, this Neolithic package enables the people now to be superior to their neighbors, to their neighbors still being hunter-gatherers. And now the farming way of life was invented and was spreading uh, uh, all over Europe. We saw this map at the beginning, uh, the, the, the distribution of this new way of life, the very quick distribution of this way of life. How people came uh, to Göbekli Tepe, or how you bring a lot of people there to be able to uh, erect these monumental uh, architectures there, of course, not just by saying, hello, come, and we work, no feastings. Feastings, big feastings, we can expect, happened at the mound, and so the people came there. Now they had the power for these workings. They had been uh, working events at the site, and we have, of course, a lot of uh, experimental archaeology, how to move monoliths, how to move big stones, but we fortunately have also some authentic photos from Indonesia done by European travelers showing how megaliths being moved, uh, actually being moved for the construction of a tomb of a king, and we can be very, very sure that uh, at Göbekli Tepe it was looking similar. This, in short word, a story which is, of course, uh, which was just a rough framing of a story of uh, results, not only my results, but this is teamwork, of course, archaeology usually is teamwork, uh, including our workmen, local workmen from the uh, nearby villages, uh, including students from Europe and from Turkey, including scientists, specialists, of course, for, for their parts, for archaeo fauna, for botany, for other things. And uh, yeah, we try to continue uh, many years and to to uh, answer much of the still open questions which are still existing about this world, this unexpected and exciting world of undergatherers, which uh, changed to be farmers and which changed the, the, the world history. Thank you. <laughs>